amazing place. People, everyone should be saved. Everyone should be full of joy and peace. There should be order in this world because Christ came down and died for the sins of the world. So there's no reason why this world is still like this. It's because of sinful men. This is because of disobedient people who hate God. That's why this world is still like this. And God is going to get rid of the disobedient. God has to get rid of the ungodly. Because the ungodly, you're, you're ruining this planet. Your sin is what's making this planet uh, worse and worse day by day. It, it's your sin, folks. That's why this world's a bad place, because of your sin. It's not God. God made everything good. God made everything perfect. But sinful mankind, you have all these weird ideas to do all this crazy stuff. You got all these billionaires and stuff talking about launching rockets at the sun and all this other weird stuff. You got people who want to make all these bombs and all these nukes. You have all these chemtrails and stuff. So you have all this water pollution. So God made everything perfect, but the, the wicked heart of mankind, you ruin the planet. Your sin ruin the planet. You stain the planet with blood, with all the murder. You make the blood, you make the land full of, of blood and all this other stuff. You know, people want to rape each other. People, well, people want to rape. People want to, uh, people want to invade other countries for no reason. So all this stuff comes from the wicked heart of mankind. God's not telling you to go rape someone. God's not telling you to go make wars. Wicked mankind, your disobedience, you go do that by yourself. You, 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 you have your own personal gain. That's what happens when you live in sin. You just care about yourself. You just care about what you want. You're like, I want sex from that girl because she looks good. You know, I want that country because that country has money. You know, I, I want those stocks because those stocks make me rich. And you don't care, you don't care at the length where you have to go to, to get it. Because you feel like there's no consequences for your sin because there's no God in your life, right? So you can just do what you want and just die and get away with it, right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be destroyed, folks. You're going to be destroyed. And you're going, you, 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 you're going to feel so, you're going to feel so dumb when you die and go to hell because you thought there's no consequences for your wickedness. You thought you could just ruin people's lives and get away with it and escape in the afterlife. You're not gonna escape ruining people's lives. You're not gonna ruin people's life and just every day's gonna be all fine and dandy because you're dead. Imagine imagine there's no God, folks. That means Hitler just killed six million Jews and now that dude is it is what it is now. Do you know how you know how horrible you would feel to know there is no God, there's no justice? If there's no God, folks, that means there's no justice. I mean, people, you just do what you want. People just dying, and that's it. You know, tough luck, bro. If you if you got cremated, tough luck. That is what it is. There's no God. It just sucks for you. But good thing there is a God. That means there's a judgment. That means God's going to judge all the wickedness of mankind. So that means you don't, you don't have to worry about people like Hitler and Stalin because those people, they're going to be judged. God's going to get, God's going to judge those people. The Bible says, God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. So thank God there is a God. Because there is no God that means these wicked people did all this wickedness and they got away with it. You know how horrible you will feel? You know, you know how terrible it is to know all these wicked people in the past centuries did all this murder, did all these crimes against humanity, and they just died and got away with it? People like Genghis Khan um, almost ruled the entire world. Genghis Khan raped so many women and stuff. He told me there's no God, so that dude just got away with all that stuff. Come on, people. So when you say there's no God, you're, you're pretty much you're saying a lot. You're saying a lot of stuff. You don't even know what you're saying. But this is why you need to forgive, also. You know, you, this is why you need to forgive. You know, because God will handle it. God, God will handle your enemies. God will handle the wicked. So there's you don't have to take matters into your own hands. God, God commands you to forgive. God, God commands you to let him fight for you at times. God, God, does, God, God will fight for you. God fights for his children, God of Israel. So you, you understand people when to fight um, and, and when to back off, you know? That's why you need to know God, to know what God wants you to do. Because God told Joshua to go to the land and get the inheritance. So God does want you, God does want to teach you how to fight, you know. God does want to teach your hands how to war because this is a spiritual warfare. God does want you to put on the former of God. The Bible does have to be strong in the Lord. So yes, God wants His children to fight. People, you're not going to just do nothing, and God does everything. That's not how that works. God wants you to fight. You know, put on the armor of God, and you know, get back, get back with the, with the devil stolen from you. 
Because the, Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the devil, he, he wants to steal a lot of things from you. You know, your, your relationships, your own finances, blessings. The devil wants to steal all this stuff from you. But, but with God's power and God's authority, you can take all that stuff back. You can, you can take your joy back. You know, some people, you feel like as, as a little kid, life was good until a certain thing happened. And ever since then, you've been, you've been in a downward spiral. So God gives you the authority. God gives you the power to take that stuff back. Because Jesus Christ says he comes so you can have life and have it more abundantly. So the devil wants to take your life, folks. He wants to, he wants to destroy your life um, little by little. He wants, he wants to destroy your joy. He wants to take your peace of mind. He wants to take all this stuff from you. But you don't have to let him do that. Jesus Christ, he's the, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has conquered. Jesus Christ has the keys of hell and death. Jesus Christ, he's going to judge the quick and the dead. He's going to judge everyone on this planet. Jesus Christ has all power in heaven and earth. He has everything under control. Nothing's random. Nothing's a giant mystery was coming. If you read the word of God, you know what's coming. Do you know what's coming, folks? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Destruction. Destruction is coming upon this world. You already know You already know in the last days with all the um, COVID stuff, all the lockdowns and all the weird things going on. You, we're in the last days, people. We're, we're in the last days. And a lot of people, you have no idea. You have no idea we're in the last days because you're spiritually asleep. You're spiritually asleep. And the devil wants you spiritually asleep because if you're asleep, you're not going to wake up. You're not going to get right with God. You're not going to repent. And then when destruction comes, you're going to be destroyed. This is what the Bible says to be sober and watch. God calls us to be the children of the dead. God calls us to watch and be aware of the times. Because if you're not aware of the times going on, folks, you're going you're gonna to just you're gonna walk into destruction. You're going to walk into it because you don't know... No, it's not part. It's not party time no more, folks. It's not time to party. This is time to get right with God. This is time to get right with God. We're in the last days. We're, we're in the end days. Okay. You need to get right with the Lord, people. You need to get right with the Lord and, and wake up to what the times we're in right now. Because this, with this world is, is going to go into a dark, dark tunnel. Life is not going back to normal because you got your um, 15. COVID booster shot, life's not going back to normal for any reason. Life is not normal no more. Life is not normal. You know, you have, you know, half men, half um, girls, you have non-binary, you have all types of things going on. Life is not normal. Life is not normal, folks. You have satanic people in the Grammys. Life is not normal. This life is getting weirder and weirder day by day. You got people, you got people talking about making me pregnant. So life is not normal. Life is getting strange and strange and strange and strange. And many people, you're so brain dead. Many people, you're so asleep. You're just like, well, okay, I guess it's 2023. I guess it's what it is now. That's horrible. That's horrible. That's how you know this generation is brain dead. This generation is so brain dead. You have all this weird stuff going on. You have all this weird stuff going on. You got people. You got people talking about men can have periods, men can get pregnant. Then you have a generation who sees this stuff. They're just like, oh, who cares? I just care about my TikTok. You know, I just care. Oh, who cares? I just care about, you know, going to a concert. Who cares? I just want to go to Las Vegas Strip and have fun. This is a very brain dead generation. And that's why this generation, most of you people are going to be destroyed. Most of you folks, you're going to, you folks, you're going to die at a very young age. Some of you folks, you're never going to have kids. You're not, you're not even going to get old because God's going to cut you off from your wicked lifestyle, your perverted, disgraced lifestyle. Because the Bible says God's not going to prolong the days of the wicked. God's not going to give you a long lifestyle. Like all you do is just watch porn and talk about all types of weird stuff. And you, you, you're, you're, you're out here perverting genders and stuff like that. You're not going to live a long lifestyle. Even some of the lifestyles you live don't live long anyways. Like homosexuals, they don't have long lifestyles, folks. Uh, a homosexual, a gay lifestyle, is like, I think it's like half of a normal um, lifespan of a regular person. So those lifestyles have consequences. I think it's like 40, 40 years old, 50 like that, homosexuals die because they die from like AIDS and HIV, folks. So you got to understand that a lifestyle of perversion it's going to kill you. 
Sin is going to kill you. It's going to take you out in this life sooner than what you expect. And there's no one to blame but yourself. There, there's no one to blame but yourself. And, and so we have, to, we have to stop acting like, you know, God owes you something. God doesn't owe you anything. God doesn't owe you anything. God died for you. God, God gave you life. God gave you his word. He doesn't owe you anything. But we owe everything to God. We owe everything to God. But people have this, people have this thing in their head where they feel like, you know, God, God needs them and stuff like that. And God would be lucky to have me, you know, and stuff like God doesn't need you, bro. God doesn't need you. God loves you and he wants you in his kingdom, but he doesn't need you. You need God. God, God doesn't, God built everything for his pleasure. God didn't have to create you. God didn't have to make you, but he did because he loves you. Because he wants, he wants you to share in his glory. He wants you to share in his love. God wants you to share in his awesomeness and his majesty. God wants to give you something more. So, so yeah, God doesn't need you, Amen. but God wants you, folks. God, God wants you to, to be a part of this stuff. You know, the Bible says God created the, the earth for the children of men. God gave this planet to us, for us. God did all this stuff for us, folks. He didn't have to do it, but God did it because God wants us to um, have this meeting on earth. But Satan, folks, Satan in his jealousy, this dude Satan, was so jealous that Satan um, the seed of Adam and Eve, Satan, because God gave us so much, folks. You understand how much God gave us? God told Adam, God told Adam, go name the animals. All these animals people love, like lions and stuff. God told Adam, go name the animals. God gave us so much authority to be on earth, folks. And Satan was so mad. Satan was so hurt. Satan was so jealous. The same like Satan, Satan came down and corrupted us. And now as human beings, we're in a fallen state. But this is not this is not what God wants us at. God wants to elevate us. God has a better God has better plans than this. God has a better world than this planet right here. Because this is not it, folks. You know this is not it. All the destruction and chaos and murder. This is not This is not God's uh, plan for a world. This is not it. This isn't it. But this is the world mankind in their free will has made. But God always has a plan. You want the word. God knows the beginning from the end. And God always has a plan. And this is why God had a plan of sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the world to redeem the world. So yeah, folks, God knew you would fall. God knew we would fall. God knew we'd be disobedient. God knew we would destroy each other and destroy the world. But God in his mercy and love, God's like, I know these people are gonna rebel and do all types of crazy, wonky stuff, but I love them so much, I'm gonna come down, redeem them, and I'm gonna fix it. So God always has a solution. God always has a plan. And you wanna be a part of God's plan. You wanna get in line with God's plan. You don't, you don't want to go against God's plans, folks, because that's what you're doing right now. You're living in sin. You're going against God's plan to redeem the world because God is going to, God's going to come down and he's going to reign on earth. So Jesus Christ, he's going to come back down and he's going to reign on this planet. It's going to be full of peace and joy. And everyone, it's not going to be any wars. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of, oh, it's going to be a, um, amazing, folks. You want to be a part of it. And if you're not in God's plan, if you don't, if you don't like that plan, God's just going to get rid of you because God's not going to keep allowing the evilness to, to, to run rapid because oh, no. God has been God patient for Jesus. thousands of God years. God will love everyone. You know, not you live in sin. God's going to destroy you. He's going to repent from your sins and cover up. You cover up, wear some decent clothes. God's going to cut you down and you're going to, you're going to burn in hell. The real Jesus Christ is not playing around with sin, folks. The real Jesus Christ um, hates sin. Because a lot of people, you have this fake Jesus inside your head. A lot of people, you have this, you have this weak version of Jesus. You have this American version of Jesus. Just do what you want. Um, you have this hippie version of Jesus. That's not, that's not the real Jesus Christ. That's not, that's the American version of Jesus. But Jesus Christ, um, he was a Jew. Jesus Christ, he was a Jew. He wasn't American. And Jesus Christ is God, and God is, is a consuming fire. And God is a consuming fire, and God hates sin. So Jesus is not weak. He is meek, but he's not weak. Jesus Christ, he's gentle, he's kind, but he's not soft. So don't take, don't take Jesus' kindness for weakness. Because that's very dangerous. Because he is still God. You gotta understand there's more people in hell than heaven. 
So yeah, God, God is God is um, a solid rock. God is firm. God is confident. God doesn't care about human opinion. God's not moved by your movements. You know, you don't you don't really shake God. We people feel like, oh God, you think you? I don't believe in God. You think this and that. You, you can say what you want about God, but you know, God's not gonna be moved. You know, God's not gonna be moved. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. So don't war against God, people. Don't war against God. Satan tried it, and now he's down here um, causing all type of chaos. Satan thought he could, he could war against God, and that, that was an utter failure. That was utter failure. And now he's trying to convince you that you can war against God, and you can you can question God and be all this stuff. And be like, well, why would God do this? Why would God do that? People, you don't, you should stop questioning God. Read His Word and get to know who God is. Humble yourself and get to know Jesus. Humble yourself and get to know Jesus. God has answers to all your problems. All the all the all the questions you have about you know why I'm here in life. Why did God make me? Why I'm supposed to be here? God has the answers to all your questions. See, if you just read the Word of God, read the Bible, get to know Him, and your questions will be answered. Or, and get to know Jesus also. He'll also answer your questions personally too because God speaks to you. God speaks to you, um, people. God does speak to you. So all the questions in life, God can answer them. So you don't have to walk around in confusion. You don't have to walk around in mystery. Because most folks, you think life's a mystery. You're like, is there a God? Is there not a God? Why are we here? Um, yeah, I believe in a God, but I believe in a higher power. All this mystery stuff is unnecessary. All this, all this mystery stuff is unnecessary. So life's not a giant mystery. This isn't a maybe. It's a God. Maybe there's not a God. No, there's a God. And you can get to know him. And his name is Jesus. You can get to know him. God is not the author of confusion. So if you're confused, it's because you're chilling with Satan. That's why you're confused. Because God did not make anything confusing. God said, hey, there's male and female. But what his generation says, you know what? There's males, females, half male, half females, non-binary, half male, half zebra, half female, half unicorn. So this generation, you cause all the confusion. You don't want to cause all the confusion because of your disobedience. God made it very simple from the beginning. In the beginning, you know, God made the heavens and the earth. But this generation, you're like, well, I don't know about that, man. Maybe there's something else out there. Maybe, you know, this Big Bang thing. And look, I'm not, I'm not this is a Big Bang, you know what I'm saying? Maybe God's let to be light, there's a Big Bang. So there's nothing wrong about that. But most folks, you want to you wanna have this argument and thinking like, well, you know, there's a Big Bang. Then it's like, okay, who made the Big Bang? And they're like, well, we don't know. And it's like, come on, folks. What are we doing here? What, what, what is this logic we, we're going in? Jesus is God. Jesus is God that came down in flesh. He's the, he's the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. And that's what most people you need in your life. You need is peace. You need rest. You need hope. Because Jesus Christ is our only hope in this world. Because without Jesus Christ, you don't have any hope. What is the, what is the hope for if you don't believe in heaven? If there's no better world after this, who wants the hope of getting drunk every weekend until they die? What type of hope is that? That's not hope. That, that's sad. That's depression. That's despair. What, what, what type of hope it is, you know, and, and never having a family or never having anything serious with anyone, that's not any hope. That, that's horrible. That's despair. That's what atheism is. Atheism is despair. So most people who can say, I don't believe in God, that's horrible. They're, they're miserable people, folks. A atheists are miserable. Atheists are truly miserable because there, there's nothing, there's no reason to live for life if, if there's no God. So pretty much, if you're saying there's no God, that means all this stuff is by accident and there's, there's no reason for anything. There's no reason for relationship. There's no reason for marriage. There's no reason for friendships. Cause it's all one big accident and you're just gonna die. It's not gonna matter. I mean, that's just horrible people. And who wants to live a life like that knowing there's no point in life. We're just here as an accident. They were just gonna die and that's it. I agree, I agree. That, that's horrible folks. Atheism is despair. Atheism is hopelessness. And that's why many atheists, they are hopeless. A lot of atheists are very negative. But, but good thing there is a God, hallelujah. There is a God. Um, if, if, I mean, that's why we're here, because we're made in his image. So it makes sense to believe in God, folks. God put it inside you to know he exists. 
God wrote his commandments on your heart. So that's in God, that's why you know murder is wrong, you know stealing is wrong, because God made you with a, with a consciousness, so you know this stuff is wrong for a reason. So even if you don't know the law of God, even though you never read the Bible before, something just tells you in your head, like, hey, you know, stealing is wrong, or hey, murder is wrong. Why? Because God gave you a consciousness. God gave you that stuff, folks. So you already know the law of God. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know sin is wrong. You know sin is wrong, people. You know sin is wrong. And so the thing is, what you gonna do about your sin? Are, are you gonna keep warring against? Are you gonna keep warring inside yourself? Are you, are you gonna are you gonna own up and be like, God, you know what? I repent for my sins. God, I confess my sin. Or are you gonna make excuses and be like, don't judge me, bro. You don't know my life story. You don't know what I've been through. Or forget you and your God. So those are like the only two routes you can go. You can lie to yourself and be like, well, I'm not that bad of a person, you know. I'm not that bad of a person, you know. I'm okay. I'm decent. So what you what you gonna do, folks? Are you gonna deal with your sin? Are you gonna repent and let Jesus Christ be your Lord and Savior? Or, or are you just gonna just kind of ignore it? Or are you just gonna try to like push down um, when God's gonna poke you, when God's trying to tell you, hey, 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 what you're doing is wrong. And you're trying to convince yourself, oh, it's okay. My friends are doing it. Oh, it's cool. You know, everyone else is doing it. You know, it's the hip thing, it's popular. That's how Satan deceives you. Satan, tell, Satan, Satan comes to your ear and tells you, hey, don't listen to that, man. All that stuff is religious, it's old news. There's no God. You know, we're in 2023. There's science believe in science folks you know and all this other wacky stuff the same wants to tell you your ear so you can get caught up in Satan's lies and it'll feel it'll feel very good it'll feel very very good in your flesh when you listen to the lies but deep in your heart deep in your soul you know you're living a lie deep in your heart you know your light you're living a lie and that's why many people hate the gospel of Jesus Christ because when you come to the light of Christ the light of Christ is going to expose your darkness, and people don't want to be exposed. So people rather be like, "Hey, bro, shut up, shut up, bro. Don't, don't tell me about God. Oh, shut up, bro. I don't want to hear about Jesus because they know their life is darkness. They know they know their life is is, is are pretty much trash because they don't have God. But it's okay. When you come to the light, it's going to burn a little bit, folks. It, it burned me a little bit. I didn't, I didn't feel good at first, but when you let Jesus Christ clean you up, when you let Jesus Christ take away that darkness. He, he puts in love, he puts in peace, he puts in joy. And you realize that God does it because he loves you because um, that filth you've been living in, that darkness you've been living in has to come off you. All that, those sinful sins and stain, that sin has to come off you. And yeah, it's gonna burn a little bit, but you don't need to run away from it. You need to run to God, let God clean you up one by one, little by little. So let's stop running, let's stop running from um, Christ. You know, let, let Christ correct you. Let Christ reprove you. You know, go to God and be like, God, I struggle with alcohol. God, I struggle with depression. God, I struggle with pornography. God, I struggle with this. You know, don't don't run away from God. When you have problems, you should run to God. You should run to God to your problems, not up from, not away from God. That's how you get worse. That, that's how you become worse over time because that, show, that shows your, your level of faith. Because when God's power goes, God can deliver you from anything. God delivered me from pornography. God delivered me from anger, masturbation. God delivered me from so many things. And I put all my trust in him. And he gave me the strength and he did his He did his own mighty hand and he delivered me from this stuff. So God can deliver you from anything. So God, God is mighty. God is all powerful. God is the creator of the universe. There's, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. It doesn't matter if you say, but I was a drug addict for 30 years. Okay, that's not hard for God to clean you up. That's not hard for him. It may, might be hard for you to get cleaned up by yourself, but it's not hard for God to clean you up. God is all powerful, folks. He's all powerful. So it doesn't matter how long you've been a drunk, how long you've been a pervert, how long you've been angry. If you come to God, God can clean you up easily. So it's up to you to make the choice if you're gonna give your problem over to him. It's up to you to make the choice. Are you gonna submit to him and obey him? That's what you gotta do, and um, and be faithful, to be faithful to him, and let him correct you, let him let him clean you up. So that's what this comes down to. Who would you put? Which, who you put your faith in? Do you put your faith in the in the work of God? Do you put your faith in the finished works of, of Jesus Christ on the cross, or do you or do you wanna or do you feel like you can handle everything by yourself? Or are you are you gonna tell yourself though? Oh, I'm fine. I can stop by myself. A lot of people who do drugs and stuff they say, well, I can stop when I want to. 
Okay, anyways, a lot of people say, well, I can I can stop when I want to. I'm not that bad of a person, or I'm not, uh, it's not a habit, you know, I can, I can use it in moderation. You know, don't convince yourself, don't lie to yourself like this. That's a dangerous pathway. Be honest, be honest with yourself. Tell God, like, God, I have a problem. I have a weed problem. I have a smoking problem. I have an alcohol problem. And this problem is overtaking me, and I need your help. So the Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So it all starts with submission. It starts with acknowledgement. You gotta acknowledge your sin. You gotta acknowledge that you need help. And you can cry out to God. The Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you call upon the name of Jesus to save you, he will save you. If you call upon the name of Jesus Christ to save you, he will save you, folks. God will save you, all right? If you call on his name, he will be there for you. When no one else is there for you, when all your friends have ignored your calls, when all your friends are making fun of you, there is Jesus Christ, you know, just there right next to you, waiting for you to repent, waiting for you to just call on his name. He's waiting on you, folks. He's, he's right there in, in your deepest moments. When you're in the corner crying, you're breaking down, you know, you, you feel like life is you feel like life is not worth living no more. Jesus Christ is right there, just you know, with his hand out, saying, Hey, I'm right here. And when some people you get up, you're like, excuse me, Jesus, anyways, he calls somebody else. I mean, that's, that's, like, that's how you both treat God. But God's right there. He's always been there for you. He's right there next to you, waiting for you to call on him. And you both be like, uh, actually, next person, and you, and you, go, to, you go to somebody else that's, that can't even help you with your problems. You call up an ex-boyfriend, you call up an ex-girlfriend, something like that. It's the same problem, all this stuff, you keep going in circles. You go in the same circles over and over again. And you have the same problems over and over again because you have not given Christ your problems. You have not come in your have not came to God yet to any of your problems. That's why you're still in the same cycle, the same sad cycle, because you have not come to Jesus Christ. And you're gonna stay in that cycle until you repent and come to Christ. And some people they never come to Christ and they just die in that cycle. And that's very sad to know too. Some people they never get out their cycle. The devil has them in the same cycle of drugs and everything else, and they become worse over time. They become worse. You have to be, they, they become cranky. You know, it's, you have all these mean old people and stuff like that because they never got over any of their problems. They never overcome any of their problems. They never overcome any of their hurt. They never forgave anyone. They've been heartbroken for like 80 years and now they're old and cranky. They're full of rage and stuff and they're gonna die and go to hell because they don't have Jesus Christ and that's the sad truth. So you don't wanna be an old cranky person without Jesus Christ. You don't wanna die like that. You, you don't wanna die an old person that's been, that's been heartbroken you know, you want to die in a good old age, full of joy, full of strength, full of love, full of peace. You know, then you want you want to die well. You you, you want to you want to die in Jesus. You want to die with love. You want to you want to die knowing that you love people with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You want to die knowing that you forgive you forgiving people. You want to die knowing that you did all you could for mankind. That you serve mankind. You serve God. You love people. You want to die like that, folks, with no regrets. But we, if you doubt of Jesus Christ, you're gonna you're gonna die with so many regrets. You're gonna die with so many regrets. Thinking you should you could have loved people better. You could have done more for your children. You could have done more for your spouse. You know you could have treated your coworkers better. You know, you have all these thoughts in your head when you better die, and you got that you can't do anything about it because you're better because you know, your time is up. You know and that's a horrible that's a horrible place to be at when you're on your deathbed and you can't get you can't make anything right no more because you thought you had so, so much time to live. Because a lot of people die young before their time. Many people they die very, very young. So don't think, folks, you're too young to die. You don't know where you're gonna die. So so forgive that person. You know, forgive that person. Love love that person, respect yourself. Come to God, come to Christ, repent from your sins. Because you're, you're not guaranteed a long life. No one's guaranteed a long life. I'm not guaranteed a long life, people. I'm not guaranteed it. Even though I am covering the blood of Jesus, I, I don't know when God wants me on off from this earth. So that's so that's why I need to be wise and put my faith in Christ, and not put my faith in myself, not put my faith in some assumption that I'm gonna live forever. Well, I'm gonna I am gonna live forever, glory to God. But you're, I'm not I'm not gonna. We're all gonna leave this planet one day. We're, yeah, we're all gonna leave this planet one day. You know. The righteous and unrighteous all have to stand before God. Hallelujah. The righteous and unrighteous all have to stand before God. So, so this world we know, we, this world we know it as it is, is not going to be the same. 
It's not going to stay the same. So in the saints, we're going to have glorified bodies. We're going to have, we're going to have glorified bodies. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. But for the for the ungodly though, it's not going to be it's not going to be anything to look forward to. It's just going to be weeping, a wailing, and gnashing of teeth in hell where the worm does not die. So the ungodly, it's not going to be good for you um, in the future if you don't repent. It's not going to look good for you in the afterlife. So don't experience that pain. Don't don't get that torment. Don't do it, folks. Repent and turn to God. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. He loves you. He died for you. He cares for you. He knows your problems. Jesus says in John 14, 1, don't let your hearts be troubled. You know trust in God. Trust also, also in him. Trust also in him. He can die for you. He rose from the dead, dude. Get it right. Yeah, he died for you. Then he rose from the dead. From the fucking dead you, should, you should repent from your sins. Don't and wash your mouth before you go to hell. You need to get right with Jesus before it's too late. Because God does not like filthy mouth people. You can't go to heaven with your filthy communication. You need to get right with God. So, um, let's walk in holiness to so sanctification. Let's get um, sanct um, sanctified vessels. Let's get vessels of honor. Have a vessel of honor. So, let's honor our bodies. Make our bodies holy. You know, no drugs, no alcohol, no pornography, no fornication, no weird demonic tattoos. And all this other stuff. Let's honor, let's honor our bodies and make our bodies vessels of honor. Because our bodies are meant to glorify God. Our bodies are meant for a spouse, you know, for um, love and stuff. It's lust. It's for, it's for a spouse. Your spouse is not, it's not meant for your girlfriend and boyfriend. And really, they're just fornication buddies. They're just sex partners, you know. So, yeah, God is for meaningful relationships. God is for meaningful relationships. Everything God does has a meaning to it, but people who don't really care about marriage and stuff, they're just kind of just dating just to date. There's really no meaning in that relationship. Huh? Yeah, and yeah, it's an ease arising. Like when we we're not when we're, these relationships nowadays, they have no they have no purpose, you know, because people they don't have any long term goal. They just they're just in relationships just to have a someone to hold their hand or something like that. I don't know. Like that's not what God God made relationships with a purpose, as a meaning, for commitment, for faithfulness. That's what relationships are here for. With this generation, you made relationships a joke. You made relationships as a, as a something that's just, I don't know, it's not even serious no more. This generation, you, you don't know what purpose is because you don't know God. God gives everything purpose. God gives everything purpose. Relationships, jobs, life, friendship. If you take God out of it, then there's just really there's no purpose in it at, the, at that point. <laughs> because what, what, what is the purpose of coming to Las Vegas um, to get drunk and, you know, lose money and stuff like that? What's the purpose in all this? What, what is the purpose, folks, in Las Vegas Strip? What is the purpose of it? What, what are you chasing? Are you getting closer to happiness? Are you getting closer to joy? Are your problems leaving you? You know, are you being healed from any, are you, are you being healed from trauma? Or what is, what is the purpose of living in sin? What is the purpose of coming into Las Vegas Strip? What is it, how is this place helping you at all? Is it helping you at all? Any of your problems in life, is it, is it helping your problems? It's not, so what is the purpose here? You gotta ask yourself this, these questions, folks. You gotta ask yourself these questions. These are important questions because God has a purpose for your life. And it's not Las Vegas Strip. It's not this place. God has a better plan for you. God has a God has a better, better life for you than this stuff out here. Because God can use you for his kingdom. God can use you. He can use your talents. And you can be beneficial to the world. You can you can make a change in the world, but you're not gonna make a change anywhere if you live in sin. You're not gonna you're not gonna impact anyone if you just live in sin. The only thing you're gonna do is, is just make yourself worse and make the environment around you worse. Because as a sinner, when you wanna live in sin, you wanna invite other people with you and make other people join in, join inside your sin. So you're causing other people to sin with you, so you're making other people go down the path of destruction also with you. So as a sinner, when you live in sin, you're causing more destruction in the world, little by little. So imagine a world of just sinners. So that's why most of the world, most of the world is for the ungodly, 
Um, most, of, most of the world is still is still with the ungodly, and, and that's why this world is bad. You know, people say, "Man, why is there racism? Why are so many wars? Why are there diseases? Why is all this stuff happening?" Because of sin. You know, because of sin. People want to live in sin, and if people live in sin. There's going to be chaos. And there's going to be disorder. And there's going there's going to be um, all types of murder because of sin. Okay, so you can't don't complain about the world. Of being bad when you live in sin, folks, because you're you're making it a bad place. You're you're you're, you're adding fuel to the fire because of your sin, folks. So you gotta you gotta blame yourself, and that's why God is gonna hold you accountable. God's gonna hold you accountable. This is why God's gonna judge you for your for your sin, because God's not making you sin. God, God God didn't make this stuff. You you folks want this stuff. You want drugs. God is God didn't make um, all this stuff for you to get high off. God didn't make all this stuff. You'd want this stuff. So God's going to judge you for your sin. He's going to judge you for what you want. You're going to reap what you sow in this life. So you need to get right with God. You need to get right with God quickly and not get caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up in all 